closing years of the 19th century witnessed rapid growth of Japanese industrialization. Meiji rulers emphasized on industrialization and in fact within a few years Japan's economy was transformed. Japan acquired enormous power by way of our industrialization but this power was not deployed for her self-protection only. One of the major consequences of Japan's prosperity was the emergence of Japanese imperialism in the late years of the 19th century and early decades of the 20th century. Japan, in the interest of our capitalist growth, needed an aggressive imperialist foreign policy and Japan adopted it. In the 1870s, there were two clear indications of aggressive foreign policy of Japan. First, in 1873, some of the major leaders wanted to take an aggressive stand on Korea, but ultimately the idea had been dropped. In 1879, Japan arbitrarily occupied the Ryukyu Island and then Japan was interested in Korea. But regarding Korea, Japan came into direct conflict with China because Korea had been a tributary state of China so long. In 1876, Japan signed a treaty with Korea and recognized Korea's independence. Some Korean ports, particularly Incheon, Pushan and Onsan, was opened for Japanese trade and Japan also began a regular diplomatic relationship with Korea. But these things did not satisfy China. But Japan had her interests in Korea and conflict between China and Japan ultimately became inevitable. And the first Sino-Japanese war was the first expression of Japanese imperialism which Japan ultimately adopted. Now I shall tell something on the first Sino-Japanese war of 1894. In the Korean court, there were two factions, one pro-Chinese faction and the other pro-Japanese faction. Pro-Chinese faction was against any modern reforms, whereas the pro-Japanese faction wanted to introduce some modern reforms in Korea. At that time, Yuan Shikai, one of the military leaders in China, was entrusted with the responsibility of training the Korean army. Yuan Shikai always fomented trouble and incited the pro-Chinese group against the pro-Japanese group. At that time, one pro-Japanese leader, Kim ok kyun got aggrieved over the Korean court. In 1884, he attempted a revolt against the Korean court, but the revolt failed and ultimately Kim ok kyun the pro-Japanese leader of Korea, fled Korea and took political asylum in Japan. After 10 years, that is in the year 1894, Yuan Shikai enticed Kim ok kyun to Korea and ultimately Kim ok kyun was assassinated. This was an alarming signal to Japan. The then Japanese Foreign Minister Mutsu wanted to launch an attack on China and he waited for an opportunity. But the opportunity soon came and Tonghak revolt in Korea provided Japan with that opportunity. Tonghak movement originally began as a religious movement but in the year 1894, it suddenly took a violent turn. The Korean government found enormous difficulty in suppressing the Tonghak rebellion. They sought the help of Yuan Shikai to suppress the Tonghak revolt. Ultimately, the Tonghak revolt was suppressed, but Japan at that time encouraged Yuan Shikai to send some Chinese army for suppressing the revolt. Japan also took the opportunity and Japan also sent a troop of 8,000 soldiers to Korea. Ultimately, the Tonghak revolt was suppressed and with the suppression of the Tonghak revolt, Japan insisted that Korea now introduce certain modern reforms within the country. But Yuan Shikai replied that modern reforms might wait, but before that, Japan should withdraw her troops from Korea. But Japan was not ready. Japan was very reluctant to withdraw her troops. Meanwhile, the Japanese troops dethroned the Korean king 
and stormed the Korean palace. Then the Japanese troops drowned the Chinese battleship known as Kuangshi and 950 Chinese soldiers had been drowned. On 25th July 1894, the Chinese and the Japanese army came face to face in Seoul in Korea. Ultimately, on 1st of August 1894, both the countries declared war on each other. Things went very easy for Japan. It was a disastrous and humiliating defeat for China and China was defeated by Japan in all fronts. The Japanese, after defeating the Chinese army, invaded Manchuria and then proceeded towards Peking. At that time, Li Hang Chang, one of the outstanding military leaders of China, still hoped that China would get some Western help. But ultimately, there was no response from the Western powers and China did not get any help from the West. Then China was left with no other option but to sue for peace. And ultimately, the Treaty of Shimonoseki had been signed on 17th April 1895 between China and Japan. The Treaty of Shimonoseki provided for Korean independence and end of tribute to China. Moreover, China was compelled to cede Liaotang Peninsula and some other parts to Japan. China was also forced to open the ports of Shashi, Hangzhou, Suzhou for Japanese trade and commerce. Japan imposed and war indemnity of 200 million tails over China and other humiliating provisions China had to concede. In fact, this was the first expression of the Japanese imperialism and after that Japan went on to stick on her imperialist policy which she followed in the early years of the 20th century as well and this was the Thus, by the Treaty of Shimonoseki, Shimonoseki the Sino-Japanese war came to an end. You talked about the fact that the Treaty of Shimonoseki marked the end of tribute to China. Can you please elaborate on that fact? What yes, I have already told that uh, Korea was a tributary state to China. In fact, it is very much related to the Chinese history. China had a system known as the tribute system. The tribute system meant some countries like Shyam, Malaysia, Tibet and other countries had had to maintain tributary system. They would uh, they had to pay tribute to China and then China allowed trade and commerce. And Korea was one such country. And but the Treaty of Shimonoseki declared that Korea from now is an independent state. It is no more a tributary state to China. Now I shall discuss the Anglo-Japanese alliance of 1902. Russia had her ambitions in the Far East. Russia was apprehensive of the fact that Japan's success against China in the first Sino-Japanese war may hamper the Russian interest in the Far East. Particularly in Korea and Manchuria, Russian interests were enormously involved. Russia immediately after the Treaty of Shimonoseki along with Germany and France forced Japan to return Liaotang Peninsula to China. So Japan had reasons to get aggrieved over Russia. In the year 1900, fervently anti-foreign boxer rebellion broke out in China. A group of Chinese people belonging to several secret societies invaded the foreigners, a large number of foreigners, particularly the Europeans, had been killed by the Chinese and legations in Peking came under attack. The Western powers brutally suppressed the Boxer Rebellion and the Boxer Protocol signed in 1901 put an end to the Boxer Rebellion. But before conclusion of the Boxer Rebellion, Russia came into a clandestine deal with China and signed a secret, secret treaty with China by which Russia acquired the right of stationing as troops in Manchuria and also acquired the right of appointing a permanent resident in Mukden, the capital of Manchuria. 
this was a dangerous development not only for japan but also for great britain british commercial interests were involved in that area russian aggressive designs were not only inimical to the british commercial interest in that area but britain was very much concerned about the security of her empire in india so britain also wanted to check the russian advancement in that area during that period britain had been following the policy of splendid isolation in europe but in the far east britain could not afford to stick to that policy britain needed an ally for that reason for her own security in that region at that time a debate broke out in the japanese foreign office regarding the direction of japan's foreign policy ito hirobumi the outstanding meiji leader of japan wanted an alliance with russia ito thought that by giving russia a free hand over manchuria japan could enjoy a predominating position in korea but yamagata and katsura two other outstanding meiji leaders opposed ito's option they thought that a war with russia was inevitable and there was no question of an alliance with russia however it was efforts to come to terms with russia ultimately failed and the ground for an anglo japanese alliance was prepared by that time on 30th january 1902 the anglo japanese alliance had been signed between the two powers it was an important phenomena and according to john fairbank it was the first military pact between a western and non western country on equal terms it was a very interesting aspect of this treaty ajp taylor in his struggle for master in europe put the effects of the treaty more succinctly taylor writes the anglo japanese alliance gave the parties they wanted the japanese got recognition of their special interest in korea britain prevented any japanese combined with russia and strengthened the barrier against any further russian advance and it was the significance of the anglo japanese alliance and for the first time in the history of europe and also in the history of asia an asian country came into an alliance with a european country and it was a remarkable change in the history of international relations as well did this anglo japanese treaty continue till the first world war very good question it continued up to washington conference of 1921 during the first world war the treaty was there japan placed a 21 point program on china and demanded several chinese territories and britain accepted it do japan was not very much involved in the first world war but after the first world war when usa and britain saw that in the far east japan became the most aggressive power it was difficult for them to keep japan in check in the pacific region particularly japanese navy at that time became one of the greatest navies of the world then usa invited japan in the washington and the washington conference had been signed in the year 1921 and then britain gave up her support from japan and both japan and britain signed in the washington conference along with france italy and united states of america it was up to 21 this treaty was there after 10 years of the sino japanese war japan was again involved in a war this time again more formidable enemy russia in the year 1904 and 5 i have already said that russia had her ambitions in the far east and korea and manchuria were the bones of contention between russia and japan russia was increasingly becoming dominant in korea particularly in korean court russian influence was gradually increasing but this was never liked by japan because japan had an economic interest in korea when the japanese industrialization was going on towards the end of the 19th century the japanese industrialists very much depended on the korean market 
not only that japan was increasingly being dependent on the supply of korean rice so japan needed her dominant position in korea ultimately in the year 1898 the nishi rosen convention was signed between the two countries and both the countries promised to maintain territorial integrity and sovereignty of korea manchuria posed bigger problem between the two powers in the year 1891 russia started a trans siberian railway and ultimately the trans siberian railway was extended through manchuria and it went up to the ports of the pacific particularly to the ports of Port Arthur and Dairen. Within a few years, it was seen that Russia gathered a huge advantage through her railway concessions in that region. But Japan was very much interested in the Manchurian wealth, particularly forest resources, Manchurian gold, coal, iron. All these things were very much essential for Japanese. industrialization but when the anglo japanese alliance of 1902 was signed japan agreed that japan would gradually withdraw her army from manchuria which she began to deploy since the boxer rebellion which i have already stated but soon japan saw that it was not intention of russia to withdraw any army from manchuria negotiations continued throughout 1903 but still mutual hostility and suspicion prevailed between the two powers ultimately in february 1904 japan saw that russia was strengthening her reinforcement in manchuria and russia was using the trans siberian railway to carry her army in manchuria on 6th february 1904 Japan broke off diplomatic relation with Russia on 8th February Japan attacked the Russian fleet in Port Arthur and on 10th February ultimately Japan declared war on Russia here again it was the story of an illuminating success of Japan almost in all fronts Russia also was defeated at first in January 1905 the russian fleet had been destroyed by the japanese navy in port arthur then in march 1905 the japanese army captured mukden the manchurian capital and ultimately in the baltic sea the biggest russian fleet was very badly destroyed by the japanese navy and russia then had no power to resist at that time theodore roosevelt the us president interfered and tried for a peace negotiation and russia also agreed for a peace ultimately russia had to cede certain advantages of manchurian railways to japan the russian lease of kwangtung was also given to japan but at that time japan wanted war indemnity which russia adamantly refused then it was decided at the intervention of the us president theodore roosevelt that in return of war indemnity japan would get southern half of sakhalin it was an outstanding episode in the history of far east in the history of asia japan's victory elated the asian people like anything the asian people shattered the myth of western superiority the entire people of asia became elated with the success of japan according to john fairbank japan success led to the emergence of nationalism in asia nathaniel pfeffer very beautifully put it that everybody understood in the east that the twilight of western rule in asia had set in in fact it was an interesting event Many Asian countries were very much influenced by Japan's success. Japan became a modern power towards the end of the 19th century by her modern reforms.
but in the beginning of the 20th century by triumphant demonstration of military might japan became one of the major imperialist powers in the world it was around the time of the russo japanese war that bengal was partitioned so did the humiliating defeat of the white master race boost the confidence of the anti partition supporters in bengal very much papers like amrito bazar patrika bande mataram edited by arobind ghosh everybody referred to japan's victory over russia as india's victory over britain and oshini kumar datto one of the leading figures of our nationalist movement very revered school master of borishal in one of his speeches said if japan can defeat russia why can't we defeat britain and in the emergence of revolutionary terrorism japan's victory was set an exemplary uh, position was set in an exemplary position and in fact it was a very in money remarkable thing and very inspiring thing which proved very much inspiring for the indian nationalists in that period like from these wars and these alliances can we in any way trace the pre first world war politics is it related in some ways related. one thing is related that great britain was sure that she would not ally with any european powers so she sought an alliance with japan but ultimately great britain could not stick to the policy as far as her policy in the europe was concerned german aggression ultimately united france great britain and russia and in the year 1908 the triple entente had been formed but japan remained satisfied that when russia and great britain joined their hands japan would not be disturbed uh, in in the ensuing war in that sense it was related indirectly related but also directly related great britain had to break her policy of isolation ultimately in the wake of german aggression but german aggression was not at all related to the politics of far east but at that time germany had an interest in other colonial empire in africa and other places not in far east german interest was not that involved